Welcome back and thank you very much indeed. Let's get into our news review segment. Uh, I've introduced the headlines to you, but uh, just if you're just joining us, I'll do that again. Daily Guide, number one, pilot grilled over jet. Chief thanks president for not coming by air. And free SHS taking many students. Mahama weeps. Arrest warrant for 10 Yemenis. And MPRA decides on SNIT TUC for car. Stunning details in visa scandal report. The Daily Graphic. Wasi begins today. Mavis Kitche is GCGL director of news. And Christians Mark Palm Sunday, invite interior minister, gender ministers to parliament of Atakrade girls, child rights, international demands, Zoom Lion partners, prisons to clean Accra. And in the matter of Wasi, candidates will go through biometric verification, we're told. The Ghanaian Times, don't interfere with police investigations, president advises chiefs. Christians must reflect spirit of humility, Reverend Bezo, and deal with vigilantism without fear or favor, chief of staff. Doctors refusing postings to North threatens universal health coverage. The BNFT says non banks clean up to cost uh, taxpayer another four billion, according to IMF, and 80% of education budget spent on emoluments. My guest this morning, the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Second D constituency, Lawyer Ijapa Mesa, is here. Andrew, good morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Always and a pleasure to be here. Good morning. And uh, Sam Jata George is the Member of Parliament for Ningo Prom Bram is here. Sam, good morning. How are you doing? Very How's the weekend? Uh, well, rainy. It was wet, mm. but uh, good. Spent it predominantly in the constituency yesterday, especially. But I mean, pretty good. PDS visited a couple of times, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, permanent doom. So you, how you, you, you survived. Yeah, yeah, even though even though the 12 days that were given by me were up, we still have issues with the PDS. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe this time they bent the the yeah. pipelines that were carrying IOU and TZ in it. I don't know. Maybe no Sobolo. They're carrying Sobolo this time around. Yeah. Andrew, how was your weekend as well? It was okay. It was good? Uh, yeah. You I, enjoyed I, the rain? I, I spent it with the kids. and uh, Of course, I'm going to go to the constituency for Easter. So, you know, I had a pretty quiet weekend. Yeah. Of course, yesterday was wet. So okay. Yeah. I, I didn't get a visitation from PDS. Okay. So I don't yeah, know. You know they, they, they do selective picking. They know the <laughs> government people and then the opposition people. But matters are rising is that uh, <laughs> three soldiers are feared dead. We'll get you the details shortly. But let's start off. Uh, President says that multi-party democracy must not divide us. And he spoke while he was in the Western region someplace. I'll read uh, a portion of the story and then we can get into it. So President Akufuado has advised Ghanaians not to allow multi-party democracy to divide them as the country prepares for election 2020. He urged them to be bold, ignore and name and shame politicians and political parties <coughs> who might use them to cause political violence, which would mar the election. He said the government was on course to fulfilling its mandate and bringing remarkable improvement in the socio-economic lives of the people and gave the assurance of his administration uh, would justify the confidence and trust reposed in the new patriotic uh, party by Ghana. So that's the president there asking that let's not be divided in spite of our political standing or leaning. And he touches on political violence, a matter now which both parties are sitting at the table to discuss with the National Peace Council on how to uh, end the era of political vigilantism. Did the president speak well? And if he did, will we listen to him this time around? Because this is not the first time such a thing has been said before. Yes, uh, good call. Uh, oh, first, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers this morning, uh, to my good friend, uh, Sam George. Uh, uh, definitely a good call mm. by the president. After all, we are one people. Uh, politics is only a divergence of opinion mm. on how we think that our development agenda as a country ought to be executed. Mm. And so that activity in itself should not ordinarily lead to us being divided. Of course, the structure of our democracy and our constitution, uh, which makes it a winner takes all situation mm. uh, as opposed to uh, other jurisdictions, uh, for example, the Westminster system, mm -hmm. uh, in itself makes our politics extremely competitive okay. and that creates a sense of division 
amongst us. But uh, we interest you to note that uh, uh, amongst ourselves, we are pretty good friends. I mean, we went to the same schools, went to the same universities. And we have, by and large, been working, you know, together. Uh, in most cases, uh, on a consensus basis, particularly if you relate it to the work of parliament mm -hmm. at committee, I mean, the uh, cloak of MPP, NDC, is, is largely, you know, done away with. And we work consensually towards the, the national agenda in, in, in our decision making. And so it's important that that in itself is extended beyond the confines of parliament mm -hmm. and amongst our support base, amongst our people, amongst the population generally, mm -hmm. uh, for us not to be divided uh, uh, as a people. Of course, the MPP's agenda, which the president indicated, okay. uh, in cause of executing the mandate that the people of Ghana have given us based on our manifesto, and behoves on us to mm -hmm. do whatever is within our uh, 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 metal to ensure that we deliver on that mandate into election 2020. Mm -hmm. But, but then the question always comes, I mean, in Parliament you would work together in committees and all of that. But when you get onto the ground, it's a different ballgame altogether. Of course, like I that's said, it's where, the, that's where the problem is. It's the competitive nature of the politics. And um, the president said in 2020 we shouldn't have that. We should, we should. Uh, well, I, 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 I don't have get a, a sense pool. of uh, the president necessarily saying that our politics should not be competitive. No, no, he didn't. Of course, he said yes, we should not it, be it divided. Should not, it should not divide us. Right. And, and that, that's why I said that I think it's a good call to make. Uh, year in, year out, you know, we'll have elections. Elections will come and go. But we will still remain one people. And, and so that competitiveness uh, for power, which in itself is intended to be used for the benefit of the good people of this country, should not uh, uh, lead to a division amongst us. Mm. But must the competitiveness really, really engender the violence that we have seen not with our all. elections? Not at all. So, so why does it happen then? Well, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's and, and there are beneficiaries who keep quiet about it. Uh, of course, I mean that's why uh, it's become necessary this time around. Following Ayawazu West Wogon, uh, for some critical action to be taken mm. and positive if you ask me uh, the most short commission clearly uh, uh, was an eye-opener mm. uh, in the past we've had many violence in our elections uh, cycle uh, for which nothing significant was done about mm. this time around we've seen some action because clearly we all saw that the incidents of party uh, vigilantes you know, going out there uh, during elections to, as it were, okay. uh, carry out violence uh, was not the right way to go. And that if we fail to take a stop or put a stop to it at this time, mm. uh, uh, consequences may not be pleasant for us as a country going forward. And so I guess that uh, that action in itself uh, worthy uh, by all accounts. Right. And we should all come together as one people it's unfortunate our friends on the other side, as a party, did not participate in the process. But of course, uh, some, some of their some members, members yeah, but the NDC made it categorical mm. that they were not going to participate in the process. It was a sham. Uh, of course, some key witnesses who belong to their stock. Uh, the, the president has made a call. Will it work this time round? Well, let me say a very good morning to our viewers, to the good people of Ningo Pam Pam, and to my brother and friend, uh, Bo Bo Bo, Pam Mesa. And your, your good self, Johnny. Thank you. Um, I think that we have come to a place where we need to begin to walk our talk. I've been on this platform last year and said to the host at the time, I think it was Abina who was hosting a show yeah. that, that, that day, I said to her that we have a president who gives the best sound bites. But when it comes to action, mm. very poor and deliverable. How so? Um, I mean, the president has, if you, if you listen to President Akufuado mm. since he became president, from the 7th of January, mm. uh, the plagiarized speech, all the way down to this morning, mm -hmm. you'd realize that the president has said the right things. You can't take that away from him. Mm. He said the right things. Mm. However, in saying the right things, mm -hmm. he hasn't gone beyond saying them. He's not giving life and action to the things to the that things he says. That says. Okay. Um, I'll give you a typical example. 
In fact, whenever the president gives very, very cogent speeches mm -hmm. and gives fantastic sound bites for news, mm -hmm. uh, news, news, news clips, the next moment, what you have is the opposite of what the president said. The president appeared before his eminence, Utum Fawcett to the second, and assured him in the aftermath of the attack on the national security, mm -hmm. regional national security mm -hmm. coordinator, that he was going to put a stop to it and that these hoodlums who were off the NPP stock will be called to order and there will be a stop to it. Right. Less than 48 hours after, you saw an unprecedented thing that hap has never happened in the annals of our country. Mm. A competent court of jurisdiction sitting and you had these NPP hoodlums storm the court mm. again to try to free those who had been incarcerated. You know, so when the president actually says there will be none, you actually see an escalation of it. And so, like I said, the president gives, the president charges you to be citizens and not spectators. spectators. People become citizens in the example of the Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company, mm. where the board, the board that was appointed by the president, actually alleged criminality on the part of wrongdoing, f financial malfeasance mm. on the part of the chief executive officer of the Ghana Cylinder Manufacturing Company. What does the president do? The president f dissolves and fires the board to save the chief executive. Um, there have been several instances, people who have been accused of criminality, of, of complicit cr criminality. Yesterday was exactly a year mm -hmm. from, from, from the Australian visa scandal, right. for example. Up till today, the president set up a commission. We do not know the, the, the details of that report. Mm -hmm. You don't know how people who were not journalists, mm -hmm who have spoken to media people and said they paid 12,000 US dollars to officers of the state, appointees of the president, mm. okay, how, how they found themselves in Australia and made Ghana the butt of jokes at the Commonwealth Games. Mm. It's a year on, the president has not taken action. You've seen all of those people back at post. And so for me, like I said, the president can give you fantastic sound bites and say all the nice things about fighting corruption and all the nice things about fighting vigilantism. But when the president himself mm. is, 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 for want of a better phrase, inactive mm. i wouldn't want to say he's complicit so i'll say he's inactive he's inactive in 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 dealing decisively mm. with with this cankers you realize that the president is just engaging in a talk show because i'll, I'll tell you what if you look at our political history as a country mm -hmm. from osaji for dr kwame Nkrumah, there's only one person who you can you can you can willy-nilly nail as the greatest beneficiary of political vigilantism and it's our current president you understand me i mean if you, if you look at his own self-admission that Etiwa, your chair be kakra, and we all know what happened in Etiwa. Mm -hmm. Etiwa was a violent by-election, very violent by-election. Mm -hmm. And the president, then candidate, took credit for it and, and gloated in it. You understand me? And so at the end of the T day... Times have changed, he says. Um, Let's not allow it to divide us anymore especially get into 2020. So, so we should say that our president is a repented beneficiary of political thuggery. You tell me. Well, if you say he's changed, then it means that, okay, fine, times have changed. So it means our president has repented. But you see, after he's become president, after he's gotten the benefit of politi political thuggery, it's mm. convenient for him to say he's repented. Mm. But you see, no matter, <laughs> the Nigerians have a saying, they say that no matter the amount of, cat, of milk mm. Uh, mm. that uh, a pussy cat drinks, okay. its feces will never become white. <laughs> and a leopard will never lose the sports. Yeah. You understand me? So for me, I mean, even today, been, there's been talk and talk about some of the close quarter security guards of the president. We've seen presidents. Mm. We've seen pre President Jerry Rawlings. We've seen his close quarter guards. There mm. were seven officers of the Ghana Armed Forces. Mm. Even if they were plain clothes, there were seven officers of the Ghana Armed Forces. We've seen President Kufour. Mm. President Kufour used Armed Forces, officers of the Ghana Armed Forces, mm. as his close quarter protection unit. We've seen Professor Mills, of blessed memory. He used close quarter protection, mm. Ghana Armed Forces men, because it's the Ghana Armed Forces. That's why he's commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, that's the president. Right. He used Ghana Armed Forces officers to protect himself. Mm. President Mahama. You've seen them everywhere with him. They, at times they are attired in, 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 in the ginger uh, military fatigues, at times they are in the olive grain. They're all seven officers. Mm. Seven officers of the Ghana Armed Forces. You understand me? Can we say the same about President Akufuado? You've seen the two guys who are constantly, who are closest to him in his closest, close, uh, close protection mm. unit. Are they officers of the Ghana Armed Forces? Tell me. 
are they officers of any of our security services? Tell These me. are individuals we've seen work with him from his days on the campaign trail. Mm. All of these presidents I've mentioned, with the exception of pre maybe President Rawlings, have all had a certain private security detail mm. when they were candidates that they have transitioned into the presidency with. Right. But when they become presidents, mm. their close protection unit is always as commander-in-chief by those individuals who your, are your, seven your officers. And so my point is, the question needs to be asked. I've asked, and it's a question I'm asking. I'm not okay. stating anything for certain. I'm saying that we would like to know the two officers who are, or the two gentlemen who are constantly okay. by the president. Mm. Can we know which unit of the Ghana Armed Forces they are from, okay. if, they are, if, if they are service officers? Right. And, let's, and let's begin the conversation from that. If they are not, mm. has our president imported individuals who are not trained security personnel into his close protection unit as commander in chief? And so for me, that's what I'm saying that, look, we can have all the fine conversation about doing the right thing. Mm. You asked Andrew the question. We say all the fine things in Parliament. We say all the fine things when we sit here. When we go into the grounds, that's what we do. Do we practice what we say? And I'm saying the president is guilty of that. Okay. Andrew, I, I'm sure you have so a, a few... The question uh, of whether the president's call for us to unite okay. as a people and that politics should not divide us right. going into 2020. Right. There's the long winding around that... Political went violence onto. was in the equation of the president's speech. You see, look, the facts are facts. Yes, some people who are affiliated with the NPP mm -hmm. attacked the court of competent jurisdiction. We all condemned it. The president did not endorse it. The president did not instigate it. Mm -hmm. People were actually sanctioned for those actions that they, were, they took. Okay, we've lived in this country, political violence, talency, and all those places. You were in government. What did you do? State security agents, known to government at the time, were seen shooting. Your party officers drove into peaceful crowds. Peaceful. Anita the Soso, or whatever her name is. <laughs> her name is Anita the Soso, or whatever. Well, <laughs> some matters of fact, you did absolutely nothing about it. You won that election. Were you not a beneficiary? Which election? Which election? Talency, what happened? Anita the Soso did not win. I made, I made references to several scenarios, mm -hmm. including the Etiwawa. But Talency, I was personally in okay. so what so, I so, 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 so let's let's not pretend. Okay. <laughs> the name calling is not going to help the discourse. What what is going to help us? Okay, yes, of course. A dispassionate conversation about the need for us to let our political engagement <laughs> not deteriorate into the kinds of situations that we've seen in the past. Okay? This is a president who is walking the talk. He says, look, have a conversation about how we abolish vigilantism within our political space. And if you don't, in any event, regardless, I'm going to legislate it. Let's put a bill before Parliament. Mm. Last week, you and I were in the chamber. We saw the document. We actually made a determination that, yes, it is an urgent bill because of the incidents that we've seen in the past. Is that an indication that the parties on themselves couldn't sit at the table to finish this? Have the conversation, but going forward, there is legislation that criminalize, criminalizes actions of people in that stock. Is there, are there not enough laws okay. already to criminalize any such you, actions? You see, there are laws that resemble or have the semblance of protecting or warding of vigilantism. Mm. Violent assembly, okay, is a crime. Mm. But the vigilante groups assemble not with a view to engage in violence. Okay. But, but what, what, what do they assemble so, for? Of course, to protect the ballot, to go and provide security. But that's not their job. Of course, it's not their job, but that's what we, the political parties, have used them to, 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 to pursue. Mm. And so we're saying that that activity in itself it's not a criminal offense. Okay? Okay. The name calling is not going to 
be the solution going forward. Mm. Everybody who knows His Excellency the President knows him, the kind of person that he's been all throughout, throughout his life in this country. His activities in politics are well documented. He's not a violent person. He's never benefited from any violent activity. Political violence has been with us in this country. Let's call a spade a spade. And we need to put a stop to That's it. exactly what this president has commenced the process of achieving. Mm -hmm. Nobody in the past ever attempted to solve this problem to date. Okay? And that's where we are. So what will the NPP's contribution be in trying to nip this problem in the bud and, and, and end it? What would your contribution be? Aside the president telling everybody to, to stay clear of and not allow it to, to affect us. We're reading here that the chief of staff says deal with vigilantes without fear or favor. Apart from that, what are the party, or because these are government functionaries, but what is the party itself doing I'm sure that it? when the parties conclude their conversation, we would be apprised of the decision points that both of them have agreed okay. that would apply to all of us who are members of those uh, organizations. Right. Stop. Take a final bite yes. and then we will take a I break. I just want to read exactly back what is said in the story on the finder. Right. Um, page two. Page two. Mm -hmm. And this is because my brother Messer says that the name calling will not help. The president in the second paragraph, and I'm quoting the finder, he urged them to be bold. I've been bold on the show. Mm. Ignore. <laughs> I've sought to ignore any criticism. <laughs> and name and shame politicians and political parties mm. who might use them to cause political violence, which will matter election. Mm. I'm only following the president's call. The president asks us to name and shame. And so if he's guilty, I'm naming and shaming him. Uh, people say that if the fish get what's in, you, you get what's in from the head. Any act that is you directly it? associated but with like, the president. Like I said, like I said, like I said, like I said, the call to end political vigilantism is is a is a is a good call. Mm. I have been a victim of political vigilantism. Right. Okay, state-sponsored tagging, and and that's why I said that. Look, I've, I've looked at the bill that has come. The bill in itself is not a bad idea. Okay. But the structure of the bill as it's come to parliament, there's going to be a lot of work that has to be done. For example, bill. what? Look, when you look at the bill and what it seeks to do, mm -hmm. you see that one, it's a hurriedly put together bill. There needs to be a little more explanation. The, expa the, the definition of political vigilantism, okay. even in the bill, when you go to the, I think, section 13 or so, or 10, the interpretation section. I mean, those are things we need to look at and flesh but out Professor properly. Professor Kwesi Prempe says we should not use dictionary definitions to try and create a bill because that would be a non-starter. Absolutely. And, and I mean, some of the definitions that have been given to vigilantism and all of that, and I have always maintained, and I did that before the Michelle Short Commission, I've maintained that, look, if you want to fix this problem of political vigilantism, it's not about just legislating. That's one aspect of it. The bottom line is who are the so-called political vigilantes? Do they work as political vigilantes every day? Right. No. Mm. <laughs> it's a cyclical thing. Either by elections or every four years. But what do they do? What do they do on a daily basis? They're will, guards. Will their politicians stop engaging them? That's the question. Chief. Chief. The politicians, you see, the 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 effect of these individuals who you call political vigilantes okay. goes beyond the one of daily a uh, one day operation that they do in the under the political banner. Right. I'm saying that Ghanaians bear the brunt of their actions on a daily basis. I am a crab base. As, as land guards. Absolutely. I am a crab base. My constituency is arguably one of the hottest real estates in, in Ghana today. Right. Because everybody's moving there. Yeah. And I know the effect of land guards on ordinary Ghanaians. I know how ordinary Ghanaians take their life savings by land and they are driven off the land by these land guards. Mm -hmm. Th those are the daily activities that they do. How do you fix the issue of land guardism? Reform your land. Your lands commission. Mm. You understand me? If we have proper land reforms in this country, mm. and I know that when I take money and go and buy land from Bobo, nobody's going to wake up. Or Bobo comes to me in Pram Pram and I give him land. Nobody's going to wake up and come and sack him from the land and sell that land to Johnny again. Okay. Bobo doesn't need to pay buy land for me and go and pay a group of young men to be land guards. Digging it is, fee and absolutely. Building it is, fee it is, and it is, it is, it is those land guards that the politicians go and look for when it comes to election season. You understand me? So if you want to do a holistic thing, fine. 
you 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 stop political and politicians from assembling them. Mm. But the effect of those individuals on the public okay. is not going to be dealt with. Again, allow our police the free hand. But you see, many of these vigilantes have us as politicians as their godfathers. So when they get arrested by the police, then they place a call. And the call goes to somebody. And it goes to another person. And it goes to another person. And then the call comes. And then they release them. Because at the end of the day, you know that that is the boy who is going to do operation for you on election day. So my point is, look, Let's we, can, we, can, we, can, we, can, we can do all the fine talk about it. Okay. If you pass a fantastic law about on, on, on vigilantism. Right. But you see, it's one thing having the law. It's another thing that law being used to do political witch hunting. Okay. The discussion on political vigilantism mm. must go beyond just the various groups. The, the bill lists seven groups that it, it, it has considered as political vigilantes. Okay. <laughs> what about those who have been drafted into the regular security services? Big question. What about them? Bobo. <sighs> we'll take a break here. When we return, there's more here on New Day. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back and thank you very much. Uh, let's continue the conversation. You can always join us on WhatsApp on, uh, and, and share your thoughts with us. We'll read some of your comments to you shortly. And uh, let's, let's move on now. I'm sure we can. Uh, the uh, Child Rights International, Bright Appear, is asking that the Interior Minister and Gender Minister be invited to Parliament over the Takradi uh, missing girls. He says that, well, we don't know the nature of the investigations now but it's important for parliament to intervene because the matter is taking far too long bobo do you want to sing his chorus well um i haven't read the story but i think that whatever that has to be done if it includes the need for parliament to summon these ministers to come and provide some information mm -hmm. uh, then it's a call in the right direction uh, because uh, you know i'm from that area Side of town. And so uh, it's worrying, you know, that uh, increasingly you hear the police, at least the last time that the uh, Criminal Investigation Department uh, had held a press conference mm -hmm. indicating that they know where the girls are. Right. They said that. So question is, why are you waiting? Why are you not reuniting them with their families? You know, so um, it's it's... I, I just don't understand. I mean, when I had the press conference, uh, question I asked myself was why. So if you know where the girls are, their parents want to see them. So get them and send them over to their parents. You know. So I, I think that I agree with the uh, gentleman. Uh, if Parliament has to intervene, uh, it has to so that some clarity is is brought to the issue because otherwise, you know, uh, we don't know where we're going. I you, mean, you I've had the minister of gender also say that uh, the police are on top of the game. Uh, okay. Of course, the police is under the supervision of the interior ministry. And so it may be useful for, if not the entirety of parliament, for the committee of interior and uh, uh, the gender people to get together and, and get the ministers to answer some questions. Mm. You, you are in uh, the Western region where this happened. What is the mood and feeling there, nine months after these girls were abducted? How are the people responding to some of you who are leaders and opinion leaders, lawmakers? They ask us all the time mm. that what are you guys doing to get these girls uh, back home? And we only assure them that, well, the police have indicated that they are on top of the game. And, and it's our expectation that they would bring them back. But increasingly, it's just storytelling, if you ask me. You know, because if you know where they are, What's stopping you from getting them and reuniting them? Are you disappointed? Are you of course I am. Are you doubtful? I am. Look, some closure ought to be brought to this matter one way or the other. If you know where they are, mm. then the assurance that I get from that statement is that they are alive. Right. If they are alive, why are they where they are as we speak? Okay. They ought to go back to their families. Mm. If you haven't found them, or if you found them and, you know, uh, uh, they are not in a situation where you have you can return them to their families. Mm. Let's just say so and bring some closure at least. If the families know some certainty as to what has happened to these girls, uh, I'm sure that uh, it's only a matter of time that they will get to heal. Mm. And I'm not saying that's the situation, but 
they should be able to let us have some closure on this matter. Right. Uh, uh, ASAP. Arrests have been made, some George. Uh, and it's, the child rises, and I shall say, it's not enough to, after this long while, to tell us you know where the girls are, and, and then you are not saying nothing. They want Parliament to, to intervene. Are they making the right call? I, I think that Bright is making a very important call. Okay. It's unfortunate Parliament has gone on recess, but I, I believe we'll be reconvening in about two weeks for mm -hmm. an emergency sitting. Okay. And I believe that this is something that possibly Parliament should look to consider. Okay. I would believe that we should actually have a detailed briefing of the Committee of the Whole. Okay. You know, for the whole house to be brought up to speed on what the issues are. Okay. And, and I believe that if it's possible at that briefing, mm -hmm. the Director General of CID herself right. should be present because the Interior Minister would only come and report what he's been told, but since she's the one leading the, the investigation, investigation. Mm -hmm. Parliament would need to know exactly what this is because we're representatives of the people. Right. Because I, like Bobo said, I, I was gobsmacked when I heard that the Director General of CID okay. mm -hmm. actually faced the media and said, we know where the girls are. Yeah. And... It's been almost three weeks since she made those claims, Absolutely. and still nothing has happened. Mm. You've had a Nigerian citizen who's been arrested and who has been in custody, who at first we're told was not speaking, later tried to escape police custody mm. with the connivance of a police officer. I mean, the whole thing is, is weird. Mm. The, whole, the whole story is, it leaves a lot to be desired. And, and for me, I, I mean, I, I want my, my interest here is to get the girls gotten. I mean, reunited with their families. If the girls are alive, I don't believe. And, and look, we're talking of air. The Ghana Police Service yeah, uh, yeah. is one of the most efficient information gathering units in Africa. I agree. I agree. Across the African continent. Don't underestimate the intelligence gathering capacity of the I, Ghana Police I Service. I agree with you 100%. When a crime happens in this country, in less than 48 hours, if the police service wants to act without any impediment, they will act. Mm -hmm. They know where their girls are. Me, I believe it when the police say they know where their girls are. So bring them home. Whatever it is that is holding them back, some bold officer must be able to tell the Ghanaian people. Because there is, there is something that is stopping the Ghana police from working. Because I don't want to believe that within a conf the territorial integrity of this country, mm -hmm. the Ghana police service doesn't know where those girls are. What do you suspect is holding I'm not them going back. to go into conjecture. I don't want to suggest anything okay. without any evidence. All I'm saying is that, look, it is my belief from my limited knowledge of the workings of the Ghana Police Service. Okay. I know they have the capacity to have found these girls. Okay. That belief has been reinforced by the public admittance of no less a person than the Director General of the Police CID to right. say that they do know where the girls are. Mm. So my belief in the Ghana Police Service in terms of their ability to get information when they want to it's not in doubt. It's been proven. It's, right. been, it's, been, it's been buttressed by the, the, the DG of CID's uh, mm. uh, own admission. Mm. However, it is several times the police know the perpetrators of crime, but hasting slowly in dealing with them because of the unseen hands of political influence. Most times, that is what it is. Yeah. I'm not okay. saying that is what okay. it is yeah. in this, in this matter. Right. right? You understand me? But I'm saying that, look, the trauma... Okay. <laughs> we're all parents, I believe. Mm. I mean, imagine if any of our kids was taken away from us and we do not know where they are, mm. going up to a year. And every day it is one story or, or another. I believe that there needs to be a setting, a setting decision that, look, this ends now. Mm -hmm. This ends this week. Mm. If we think that the girls are being held in such a position that, and again, I doubt it, mm. but that the Ghana Police Service does not have the ability the Ghana Armed Forces does not have the ability to go in and retrieve the girls and guarantee their safety. Uh, we have multilateral and bilateral relations with some of the countries that are experts at hostage situations. Mm. We should have reached out to them by now. You understand me? But again, you want to question why the police would know where the girls are. They've not acted on it, mm. but they will come and tell the whole media with the people who are holding the girls that they know where they are. Don't you think that that's also going to make the people want to do things to the girls if the girls are actually being held somewhere? Mm -hmm. You understand me? I mean, I've been trying to understand the rationale behind the Director General of CID telling the Ghanaian people, most times you would hear in other jurisdictions, you hear the police speak about such things okay. after the operations have been concluded. Okay. And say, we got information ABC or 
in the middle of operations. Okay. Whilst, and they'll tell you that operations are underway to clear the person because they, they know that where they've got into, they can share that information they, and, and, and give a certain level of comfort. The... Absolutely. But for us to hear this from our Director General of CID, who interestingly has been promoted twice in the period these girls have been, have been, have been kidnapped, you know, you want to find out why, why concrete action has been filled. I mean, this is enough reason for someone to say, look, I failed on, in delivering on my job. Because this job, look, we've all said the IGP has its issues, but this job is not about the IGP. This job is a job for the CID. Okay. You understand me? And, and so, for me, here, you want to ask the Director General of CID. She's a woman. She's a mother. Put yourself in the, in the situation where the parents of these three girls are. You know, and, and, and let's bring closure to this matter. I mean, Child Rights International is, is saying the right thing. I'll just urge Bright Appear to, 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 to push harder. Okay. And uh, I mean, we don't need they, to have the. They're asking Parliament, you're Parliament. We don't have to. He they're should. He should to. Child Rights International should formally petition the Speaker. Okay, right. And then formally petition the respective committees on gender and social protection right. and interior. Okay. I mean, you understand right. me? In, in That's if they've not done that already. It would be extremely strange to me if the committee hasn't had engagement on this matter since it, it came up. It will be strange to you. Yeah, it will be strange to me if the committee of parliament right. uh, responsible for uh, the uh, children, I believe it's a social or... Gender and social protection. Gender and social okay. protection. Right. You know, it will be extremely strange to me right. if, if they haven't. They haven't had already. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, the call has been made and it's important that, you know, uh, we interrogate the issues further to see whether indeed Okay. Some action has been taken on there, and if not, then I guess that it's about time. Okay, let's check out some of your messages now, and uh, we'll go there. Tilapia is starting us off. And yesterday was Tilapia's birthday, by the way, oh, so wow. belated birthday to you, Tilapia. Did he have some banku? Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> he would have devoured himself. But the, the mosquito ma maxed man reassigned. He's asking a question, and as a police officer, a senior police officer, uh, because he has a Glengarry, so you can clearly tell he's a senior police officer. Uh, personal effects is in a sack, and uh, he has two marks. The mosquitoes are hovering around him. He's moving away from the SWAT uh, <laughs> office and says, We go miss you. That's a mosquito saying to the officer, We will miss you. Who could that be? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, good morning, Johnny. I thought the so-called new curriculum would have contained a portion of where some aspects of our constitution will be taught in the schools. But mm, Julius from Keta, the president should give us a break. We are really tired of his talks. He and his party keeps on telling us that they are walking the talk instead. Mm. Richard from Boga. A.U. Farouk in Tamale says, good morning. Ghana is not learning from its past mistakes. The June disaster <coughs> should have been a lesson to Ghana on how to prevent this year of floods. Uh, but not, nothing seemed to be happening about how to prevent future floods. Indeed, the president talks and does nothing positive about his talks. Enough of his talks. David at San Arugu and uh, Good morning, Johnny. My greetings to you and your panelists. What is going to happen to the Emil Short Report? And please do come to Medina Market and see how the places they have refused to mount there uh, for almost a month now. The market women can't even brief. Uh, refuse, you say, okay. Uh, the, the mountains of refuse there. The market women can't even brief. Please do try and come and run a report on that. I think with your report, the authorities will listen. Akufuado assures new regions of equitable distribution of infrastructure. Mr. President, you have just one and a half years remaining for your mandate. Very little done, but you're always promising. For your information, the city has started depreciating again. Uh, I blood if you come on go uh, usually anything the government said to do is painted black by the NDC minority but who later run uh, or tend to agree Ghana card in a short committee to mention a few the minority will soon agree with the vigilante bill and the university bill let's watch hashtag you say massa what's some George saying we have uh, the whole former president, Muhammad Singh, the NDC were born from violence. So what's he talking about? He should give us a break. Yahweh J. Dewu in Akrapim. Sam George and the lawyer should stop the politics and talk like responsible citizens of Ghana. Uh, Jebel Lyon, uh, Bechile. 
Seth from Keta says, our president can never and ever walk his talk. Politics in Ghana now is full of pretense. Let our president work on his own current personal security. And that's a text that they're agreeing with some George that they, we should start. They, 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 <laughs> yesterday, uh, we're wrapping up. Yesterday, the rains came heavily. We're told, sadly, that uh, three soldiers are feared dead because they were driving on uh, the Tamamoto Way. It's dark, no street lights, no road markings, and they entered a gutter around the Ajay Kojo uh, end, the underbridge area. So uh, may their souls rest in peace. We're trying to connect in Adno, but we couldn't get them. Your quick thoughts. We're told that we have a double portion of rain this year. Um, we have started desilting some of the gutters, even though I think it's too late because the rains are here with us. But the stories of people losing their lives in the rain every now and then, they seem never to go away. Why? Very sad situation. And it, it leaves me thankful to God. I mean, I, I use that road every day. Yesterday, I drove back from the constituency okay. in the middle of the rain. Right. And I saw two accidents yesterday along the road. Yeah. And so I know what that motorway looks like when right. it rains. When it rains, visibility is poor. There are no right. lights on the road. Right. There are still potholes on the motorway. And so it's a major, major problem, especially given the amount of tolls we pay right. on the motorway. You would expect that it will be one of the best maintained roads <laughs> however however i believe that this whole issue about rains and floods mm -hmm. is problematic on it was on on friday right the minister for works and house and made a statement on the floor of the house on preparedness for drinks thursday. Thursday. on thursday thursday, thursday, on thursday, thursday. Was, thursday. yes and unfortunately i didn't catch mr speaker's eye to speak uh, but haruna idris with the minority leader honorable did raise very key issues. Many of the drain, drains that were listed, and quite a number of drains were listed, okay. you know, um, 100,000 Ghana cities, 100,000 Ghana cities as a flat rate. Many of those drains, you know, 100,000 cities cannot do anything okay. with regards to I the work on those drains. I think they were intended for the desilting. Yes, you see, There's but you don't, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't do, you don't do desilting when the rains have started. Yeah. Okay, the, the desilting must be done in the dry season. Right. And if you read the minister's statement, the minister said that the funds for those desilting, something in the region of about 19 million Ghana cities, that total what he said was going to be spent, had been mobilized in 2018 and was ready for disbursement. Mm. He made that statement on Thursday, which was, I think, the 11th or the 12th of April. Okay. If funds had been mobilized in 2018 for desilting work to be done, January, February were, were pretty dry months. You wonder why those desilting have not been done. Right. And now in April, when we've seen the early onset of the rains, okay. we are being told that this desilting will happen. Even as we speak, many of those drains don't have contractors on site. True. So the problem for me here is, again, the president spoke about 200 million for sanitation. Right. I said that last right. week, yeah. you know, which if you had, and that was used in 2018. The question is, did we see deliverables on that? Mm. If we had spent 200 million on sanitation in Accra mm. and across the country, major capitals, where we sit today, will we be there? We're, Remember we're, last we're week? We're getting another 200 million, according to Atacha. You didn't get the first 200 million. You're mm. hoping to get a second 200 million. So we're talking 400 million. Okay, the promises really don't work in and don't cut it for us. And you remember last week I said to you after we finished the show, and I'm okay. going to say this on air, that this is Accra. We're talking about Accra. We're looking at the drains of Accra. Kumasi is a bigger, is a bigger problem waiting to happen. Right. Accra, because of our topography of Accra and the kind of... of, 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 of soil, ground soil we have. Okay. The what some of the water is able to seep in and there's runoff into the sea. Yeah. Kumasi is hilly. Kumasi is hilly. Takradi is also beginning to get become a problem. Tamale is also going to become a problem. If we don't have a focus on this mm. and decide that look, over the next five years we're fixing our drains. This year, we're focusing on all the drainage in, in the western region mm. and fix just the western region. I know we've solved that problem. The next year, we move to another region. Okay. We would continue to go around in circles with this piecemeal spreading thing and would we'll achieve nothing. It's sad. Popo, you see, finally on uh, this one, these then, are we'll wrap up. important national conversations that we ought to have. Right. But if you sit here and say that the promises are becoming too much and they don't cut for us, then you take it to the realm of politics and we would debate you. Because, look, people we sat in this country. I agree. That's why I said Talk to me. that there are important national conversations that we ought to have. Mm. And let's leave the politicking out. You promised us that you're going to get Conti. We signed loan agreement. What happened? You are complaining of portals on the motorway. You would like just left government. What did you do about the motorway? It's been over two years. Stop of course. You, motorway problems didn't begin today. Absolutely. But you know the reasons why you couldn't do it. You didn't have money. 
That's a fact. You okay, so 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 let's let's look. I'm interested. You just built Kwame Nkrumah Circle, Accra, Dubai. What happened there last week? It got flooded. You spent huge sums of money. You didn't even fix the engineering. Okay, but I don't want to go on that tangent. Right. We need huge sums of money to fix our drainage problem. That's a matter of fact. Why, why aren't we prioritizing so, them? So, so that's why I said that, look, I'm interested in us having a conversation that, look, government, now that you've come out of the IMF program and you don't have any limitations, okay. are we, as a country, going to agree and not play political chess with it mm. for you to go and secure funding to fix our drainage problems? Let's have that conversation. Right. Because otherwise, we will come back next year and still face the same situation that we're facing today. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your Monday morning. Andre Japa Mesa is the member of parliament for Second D. He's also a lawyer and a very good friend of this program. Thank you very much for coming, Bobo. Always a pleasure. And uh, Sam Nati Jata George is a member of parliament for Nigo Pram Pram. You don't like the Jata when I mention it. No, no, I don't mind at all. <laughs> He's a member of parliament for, uh, for Nigo Pram Pram. Unfortunately, I just kept quiet to see if I would also be called a friend of the show. But, I oh, but, but you are a friend of the show. Oh, 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 you, you appear here more than uh, Bobo. Oh, but you I called him a friend of the show, but me, I'm not a friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> it's rest if Sally quit all. <laughs>